Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be the latest edition of the Royal Takers. We talk about a weird 3-2 to two loss to the Anirondack Thunder while previewing tonight's game against the Anirondack Thunder as well by going over what from last night's game we have to adjust to likely come out on top with the W last evening. Kirk McDonald said in the post-game press conference after the team went up 2 nothing, excuse me, it seemed like the play got a little bit too perimeter Bay Braden Lowe even said it. Um, when I talked to him after Kirk, where it's nice, it looks cool when you make all the nice moves on the outside, but uh, it doesn't always translate to the score sheet, paraphrasing what he said. And that kind of did become the feel and the issue where they did only get 14 shots on net. They were 0 for 4 in the power plays, so the penalty kill was great. And Braden Lowe was fantastic on the penalty kill, generating two high A chances for himself and then getting one of those later in the third period as well. He had a very good game, literally everything but the finish. But of those 14 shots, Kirk McDonald believed that 10 of them were high-octane scoring chances. And obviously, you can't have that off of 14 shots. You limited their shot total well, but you didn't limit their A++ scoring chances well. And that's the biggest key to tonight's game for the Royals to take a lead early and also to be able to hold that lead that they grasped early because they had a nice play. Right after the power play, they were able to shoot it on, and Coop got the rebound on the shot that I believe was from Ebbing, and then McFadden got the other assist. And then you also had Patty Bykoff that was able to score on a nice pass from Brad Morrison in front. Um, and then Kaplan scored on a breakaway, where Anirondick at that point, I didn't think really had much going for them until they had a couple high A chances, but Pat Nagel stepped up before the 15-34 mark of the second, and then that kind of got them churning a little bit. And then 4.53 into the um, third, Jerry was able to score um, from Meyer and uh, Phillips for his first. And that explains why they went over to grab the puck yesterday. That was Jerry's first goal. And then Smith was able to score late, which was more of just a, I mean, it was a crap goal. Um, it wasn't, it was a not a bad play by Anirondack is, um, coach didn't want to make it sound like but I mean it's just the way hockey goes sometimes it's the way sports is sometimes if you're in the wrong spot at the wrong time the bad bounce will go off of you and in I did think though this game went into the odd category of the Royals still outplayed them throughout most of this game they were much better in possession numbers they were much better in overall play it's just when you get a little bit too perimeter when you have the lead Sometimes that's going to keep the other team in the game as it did in this game and give them an opportunity to come back. And we know from the last game against Adirondack that the Royals also fell in uh, a couple Wednesdays ago that that game in OT when they fell was also because of just too many chances given to the other team. Where I remember Kirk McDonald after that game said he didn't even believe they deserved the one point. But in this game, they actually played a really good game. Run compared to that game, they actually played a really good game throughout this game where that game was kind of sloppy and they were just able to battle back and, and kind of get to overtime similar to how Adirondack was able to battle back against us and get and get the win because of a weird bounce goal at the end. This game, I think, goes into the category of you just got to stick to the strategy, you just got to stick to the game plan and then come into tonight. So like I said, the keys would be just give up less high-octane scoring chances because as Coach said, 10 out of 14. 10 shots of 14 being high, A-plus chances is not a good thing. And then also <clears throat> be able to do what they did yesterday, do exactly what they did yesterday. Be great on the PK, but also be great on the power play, obviously. That's something they have to get going. Some Coop scored right after, had some chances on the second power play. But getting that going as they were 0 for 3 on the power play, Adirondack, albeit was 0 for 4, that would be huge as well. So you got to be able to just, one, another thing that I always say too is jamming in the neutral zone got to get the good goaltending again, give up less high-octane scoring chances. And as yesterday, just come out with some punch and then just stay with that punch, stay with the great crash of the net mentality that this team had all year, went a little bit too perimeter yesterday. And I think there is going to be revenge on the Anirondack Thunder tonight. Those would be my keys for adjusting from yesterday's game into tonight's game so our Reading Royals can get maybe a 3-2 victory uh, as a score prediction instead of a 3-2 loss. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe, and please continue to subscribe down below. Or above them, the easy to use widget to keep the channel growing to 215 or more by the end of March. We really appreciate your support this far. Have a good day, everybody, and go Royals.